All right, I think that gets us to six. Um, the recording has started and uh, we are now live for the January 20th, 2022 uh, Assembly Enterprise and Utility Oversight Committee of the whole. Um, we will be taking the roll, Madam Clerk. Ms. Allard. Here. Oh, thank you, Ms. Allard. Here. Mr. Dunbar. Here. Ms. Kennedy. Ms. LaFrance. Here. Mr. Presperdia. Mr. Peterson. Ms. Quinn Davidson. Mr. Rivera. Present. Waddleton. Here. And Ms. Zalatel. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And again, everyone, I apologize for the barking dog. Uh, she's trained to bark when I'm on Teams meetings. And so um, we have an agenda before us. Madam Clerk, would you post up the agenda briefly? So we have a pretty um, robust agenda for today. Three substantive reports under the new business section and then a couple of items on the follow up. Uh, we have a solid waste services composting report by uh, the director of the utility dance pay. Then we have the Birchwood Airport conversation uh, first round to the assembly from uh, Mr. Bill Starr, former assembly member, and then a discussion about the Jacobs master service agreement for Port of Alaska services. So uh, is there anything about this agenda members would like to amend at this time? If not, we'll just proceed. Hearing none, for the sake of time, let's dive in. Uh, Mr. Zappay, why don't you take the floor? Okay, what I got for you today, Chris, is just uh, where we're at on the composting program for 2022. Uh, we're going to start the program back up on May of 2022. We're going to announce the sign up and the date on the uh, SWS website. The, the roll carts will be delivered to the new enrollees that sign up in late April and early May. And scheduled for the pickups will be on our website also. You can check there to see when your day is to uh, be picked up. Uh, in house, we're going to make some internal changes to see if we can uh, cut costs and make it a little bit more efficient using our own equipment and uh, personnel. And uh, we're going to be doing the most of the collecting and the distribution of the collected compost material. The uh, rate, the rates on the uh, on the uh, compost carts. We we're, might have to come back to the assembly here and uh, before the first quarter and see if we can get a small rate increase on the composting cars so it can help fund some of our uh, expenses. And then uh, on, on that note there, we're still working through the composting feasibility study by Tetra Tech, and I'll make sure that the assembly members get that. And like I say, it's on our website also. And uh, there's uh, smaller uh, things that we can do. And then there's a big picture also if we start getting more of a composting uh, uh, more tonnage. As the tonnage goes up, we can get in some of these other programs that we can do on site at our own facility instead of taking it to Palmer to Moffat Farms. <clears throat> and as we work through that, we're going to just we're uh, and as the size and the needs as our program grows, we'll, we'll uh, consider these other options that we have from Tetra Tech. There are some of them are quite expensive and then some are Something as if we had the tonnage of something we could probably uh, afford on our own. And uh, the uh, pilot program that we used, you know, starting in 2018, we're just expanding on that. And as we grow, we got as uh, in 2020, our, uh, we had 1,100 uh, household participants up from uh, 880 in 2019. And then 2021, it was the same thing. We had about uh, 1,300 customers were up to about 360 tons of organic uh, yard waste uh, collected by SWS, and that's going to grow as as we as the program gets out there and gets uh, gets out to the uh, public more. Uh, there's another private hauler. Their their uh, composting is also growing, and they're also delivered to our site at uh, uh, at ARL at the uh, Eagle River landfill. That's where it's. Uh, uh, put into a 120 yard trailer and then it's delivered to Moffat Farms as the as the trailer. And I think it's like once or twice a week we deliver. And, uh, and of course, SWS wants the uh, program to 
to, to keep growing because it, it just takes a lot of, every time we take something out of our uh, waste stream, it helps the landfill, you know, stay alive for uh, additional years as, as we take the diversion of the organics and other, other recycling products out. And uh, you know we're just reducing or we just want to re reduce the transfer of organic feedstock and and uh, and other materials so we can keep it out of the landfill and keep the diversion going. That's about all I have. The program, like I say, will start in May. We'll end in October, and uh, hopefully we'll get uh, when we uh, get the signups on the website that will get some more people interested in doing it. If there's any questions, I'll take them. Thank you, Mr. Zappé. I do see a first question from Ms. Alatil. Ms. Alatil, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Zappé, for being here today. Um, I'm looking forward to the composting program starting back up. Um, I haven't seen the report from Tetra Tech, so if it's available, could a link or it the report be distributed? Um, and then my second question is, what is the intersection of the new any um, new features at the centralized transfer station being able to um, possibly support um, the composting program or help defer costs? Um, I know that waste diversion was um, a significant portion of that design. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Eltel, uh, thanks for the question. A, uh, when we get the new transfer station online, the composting uh, material site will be at the old air or the old transfer station on 56 across the street. So and then as <clears throat> if we have room here, we're going to try to do the composting here. The SWS will try to do their own composting program. And if not, at least it will be here and we can haul it directly out. It won't have to be delivered to ARL. Everything will come here. So we're hoping that it'll be a bigger program in 2023. Fantastic. Thanks for the update. Um, is the Tetra Tech report available? It is. It's on the cell. It's on the SWS, SWS website on the bottom there. And if not, I'll uh, I'll email it to you. I got an email also. I can send it over. And what we'll do with that, Ms. Alatel, is uh, we'll get it posted also up on the committee page and schedule it for discussion sometime in the future. I can't say exactly when. It just depends on the level of priority. In yeah, it'd be nice if uh, if you guys read through that, and then we get back together for another uh, another meeting and, and go through what we have. So, are there any other questions? All right, uh, Dan. I'm glad to hear that we have this program planned to come back online, and I'm surprised to hear the number 360. Tons. That is a substantial amount of fill that's not going into the landfill. Can you give me a little information about the farm? Just kind of tell us. This. I don't know the story of that. This is the first I ever heard of it. The, the program that was instituted, I think, in 2018 is that the uh, compost material is delivered to the landfill in Eagle River and it's put in a 120 yarder uh, transfer trailer. And then CRS or CEI was our, is the contractor that hauls it out to Moffat Farms. It's dumped off at Martin off Moffat Farms and it's uh, it's composted there. And then every I think it's two or three times a, month, a, week, a year we bring compost material back to the transfer station into the landfill and people can come pick it up after it's been uh, the compost is is complete. Awesome, and I just, with a brief internet search, found out that Moffat Farms is part of the Alaska Farmland Trust, so in some ways we're supporting that, which is great news. Oh, good. good. Yeah. All right, thank you, and maybe at some point in the future, it's just kind of uh, way down in the weeds. We can have a talk about the farm and learn about what they do and how it works, but that can be when business is a little less loaded up. So uh, anything else? Hearing saying none, thank you, Mr. Zappé. Uh, we will move on now to the second part of the report, which I'm glad to introduce and welcome uh, Bill Starr, who is going to provide to us a briefing on a project that he's been trying to uh, inspire, working with the state, working with the municipality relating to Birchwood Airport. Mr. Starr, you have the floor. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for having us. Um, that's somewhat true on your um, preface uh, in that I am a sort of a champion of aviation per se, but this project came to my company 
um, a while back. It's coming to my company a couple of different versions, and I can just explain to you more of the current version uh, on this. A little background history is that Birchwood Airport, although inside the municipality, uh, is managed and operated by the state. Uh, it has been for quite a while. The municipality is in the airport business, of course, with Merrill Field, um, but that's not the situation with Birchwood Airport. Um, that's a, a contracted arrangement, I guess you could call it, between the FAA uh, and the state. Uh, the state uh, re responds to the FAA uh, protocols and, and handles the, uh, the airport operations under the guidelines of the FAA, not, not unlike uh, across the country uh, for a lot. I think it's a matter of, of our question in, in today's conversation relates to the opportunity for the uh, municipality to take it uh, over as an operational asset uh, inside the municipality. Um, several months ago, the state came to this, to this mayor. Uh, they've also come to previous mayors, uh, as well as the Equipment Corporation, uh, trying to look at uh, options that would provide uh, perhaps some benefits to, to the local control of that airport. Um, subsequently, the mayor asked my company, uh, Block 500 Development, uh, to, to um, look at various aspects of it. Uh, we delved into the fiscal uh, uh, operations of how the finances work, uh, where grant programs dial into all of this and sort of the economics of it all. Uh, we also delved into the operational side of things, uh, working with the manager at Merrill Field particularly, and then also Troy LaRue uh, here has been very instrumental in explaining to us the operational needs. Uh, I fly out of there personally, so I feel pretty confident in understanding uh, all of that. Uh, from that. And also, we delved in deep into the legal uh, ramifications and the legal process, uh, particularly with Patrick and Ben. Uh, you'll see them on the meetings, uh, Patrick uh, Burke and Ben Bowman for that. We also had some interactions uh, with the user group. Uh, there's several interactions going on. There's a master plan rewrite for the airport that's currently being done, uh, as well as just the user group's outreach uh, from that. Um, at the mayor's urging, the conversation was to keep the assembly informed on that. I don't think there's any question in front of the body per se yet, but I wanted to make sure that uh, as, as I've sat where you have in some cases, I feel like it's important to, to end the conversation early. Uh, I, can't, I, I, I can go through all the findings if you're interested in those four topics of fiscal, operational, and all that from that. The takeaway message is I feel the topic uh, does have some merit to continue to expand. And so the idea was, what, what does that conversation look like uh, from, from an organizational perspective uh, before we start to commit the municipality into obligations or duties and responsibilities of the airport? We want to have a conversation around that. One of the very fundamental uh, conversations would be, uh, what does that conversation look like? A conversation to have a conversation, if you will. Um, so the, uh, the handoff here is to Troy LaRue, uh, Director of Airport Systems for the uh, state of Alaska. And uh, Troy can describe uh, some of that. I wanted to define one thing though before I hand that off to you and, and the FAA refers uh, to things uh, operationally and control of the airport as a sponsor. Uh, so when you hear that term uh, sponsorship or sponsor it means uh, who, who's a designated party from the FAA uh, to uh, oversee the airport. So when you hear the word sponsorship uh, it, it's just that. It doesn't mean ownership, it doesn't mean anything more but, but the guidelines that the FAA criteria uh, emphasizes as who manages the airport uh, under their terms and conditions as well as operational control. So when you hear the word sponsorship, uh, that's that's what we're talking about. So um, I'm going to hand it off to Troy and then I can come back in the conversation later. So hi, uh, my name is Troy LaRue. I've worked for the state for over 25 years. I've performed almost every function you can perform at, a, at an airport, including, you know, maintaining a runway and a grader uh, to security to uh, all of the financial background and, and leasing and, and operations. So, so I've got a, a pretty good working knowledge. The state of Alaska operates a system of over 200 airports. Birchwood is one of those. Birchwood lies within the road system. Our airports are divided into two sections, primary airports having over 10,000 employments and non-primary airports less than 10,000 employments. Um, Birchwood is a non-primary airport as most of our airports within the state of Alaska. So what happens is we've got this big system that costs us over $40 million annually to operate, and we bring in about $8 million in leasing revenue. So there's a huge shortfall within our system. So we share resources, we share revenue, and we share capital improvement amongst the system. With Birchwood, they have to compete with over 200 airports, and most of them being non-primary, 
uh, for any type of improvement project. So as we score these projects and we prioritize them amongst the state, the roadside airports, non-primary airports, they don't receive a whole lot of capital improvement. They don't get as much love as the 82% of our off-road communities that depend on aviation solely for their transportation link. Um, it, it's really, really difficult for us to look through a lens at Birchwood and say, gee, we want to make a lot of expansion changes or spend a lot of capital improvement there because we have so many other higher priorities in the state. So we kind of believe that the Muni is in a better position to not only understand the needs of the community surrounding Birchwood and to hear them, but also what the potential of Birchwood could be, should be, and the direction that it should go. We don't have the resources or the staff to really put in the, to put the attention into Birchwood that the, I believe that that airport deserves. Um, working with the users there and whatnot, we, we do our best. And I think we do a pretty good job, but there's a lot of room for growth and improvement there, I feel. Um, the other thing is that there's some other challenges with Birchwood. According to FAA regulations, we're looking at potentially shortening the runway, which would be a big detriment, I think, to the users. Um, FAA is the one pushing us into that corner. And as we look at what our issues are across the map, we have so many things to take to our congressional delegates that we would like to see changed within federal government that some of these issues like shortening Birchwood runway probably isn't going to make the list of things that we're going to approach our delegates on. We just really feel like um, local attention and the Muni has a better stance to take care of this airport than the state does. The airport currently today is in the black. It makes money and that money goes straight into our system. It doesn't all stay at Birchwood. And that's another detriment, I think, to some of the users there. But we have to look holistically at our system from state government. We can't look at the specific needs of Birchwood. We, we do understand a lot of those specific needs, but we can't meet them because of the other priorities that we have within the state. So in, in a nutshell, I think that's the state's position and reasoning for approaching the Muni. Um, are we willing to operate this airport in perpetuity forever? Absolutely, we are. Um, do we think that we're the best managers of that airport? I don't think so, but that's going to be up to you guys to decide. So. Yeah, I think well synopsed. Um, we're, we're not any place to make a decision yet. Um, ben, Ben's on, on here uh, to talk about perhaps what, what the next steps are in packaging what that conversation looks like. Uh, boundaries, bookends to the conversation. Uh, my recommendation was that we sort of spell that out in sort of a memorandum of understanding. Um, the FAA has uh, significant protocols to transfer sponsorship. We're entertaining an opportunity of what they would call initially a co-sponsorship agreement, where the state would partner with us uh, for a while in sort of a handoff. We're not really interested uh, in getting Birchwood into a situation of uh, the state, or I, I couldn't recommend to the city do it, where we just sort of have a flip the switch, take over. Uh, we do operate Merrill very well, but the, the airports are different uh, entirely. So I think it's a walk before you run type of, of conversation. So uh, Ben, I think you're on there. Um, we talked about it, the memorandum of understanding. Uh, could you could you guide the assembly on what, what that would look like in your vision? Good morning all, uh, Ben Bowman, Assistant Municipal Attorney. I've been working with Bill on this project. Um, basically, we have a memorandum of understanding, which Bill kind of described earlier as the agreement between the Muni and the state that we were going to investigate and start putting together language for this transition of, of control of the airport. And it would probably spell out that we are going to go from it being a state operated airport to a co-sponsorship co agreement where we each have responsibilities and then potentially in the long term switching to a Muni sole sponsorship of the airport. Uh, we don't have any specific language of what even the, the even the agreement to investigate the possibility of going to the transition. We don't have anything like that developed yet. Um, and of course, you, you would be involved in that process of enabling legislation that would allow us to do the co-sponsorship or then the full sponsorship um, and you'd be, you'd be seeing this again. This is very early in the process. Uh, I'll, I'll pass it back to Bill for, or if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer those as well. 
Anything else, Bill? I don't see any questions in the chat. I really don't. I think it was advisory at best here uh, to, to let you know we're, we're having that conversation. Uh, it may become a little more public. Your constituents may ask. Uh, user groups may ask. Uh, I, I think we're, we are certainly uh, proceeding with caution. Uh, I, I will tell you we're not we're, we're well past uh, the observation that something's getting dumped on us. Uh, it's a tremendous asset. There's probably initially 70 jobs out there. Uh, I think the, the other thing you should recognize is Birchwood is full. Uh, so the conversation ongoing from the state and their master plan rewrite is how to address those needs of, of pent up demand of, of user groups that can't operate from there. So um, there's other things that are going on in the background of that. Uh, certainly, I don't particularly want to take the meeting to a place uh, of, of discomfort in the future. Uh, my role will end here pretty quick. I think once we can substantiate the memorandum of understanding, the, the term sheet, if you will, uh, that would be between uh, the players executing that term sheet uh, to, to get to the final play. I may enter in later, perhaps, for a consult as it is, but uh, I, I feel like the city is well equipped and the, and the uh, commission committees such as yours are, are able to do it. The state is very well uh, equipped as well to handle and carry the water on the conversation and intending to do so all the way up through. But it's a pretty high level conversation already now with the regional director of the FAA uh, ha has seen the conversation. Uh, others uh, inside the, the DOT commission with the state have seen the conversation and obviously the mayor has. So we'll keep you in the loop on, on that conversation uh, as well. It's about five weeks old now, and I suspect it will get some traction here as Ben and his group embrace that. So thank you. All right, thank you very much. And I appreciate, Bill, your approach to bring forward early this conversation to the assembly, the policymaking branch, so that we can uh, have this in our thinking caps and not be surprised when more of it develops. And I really appreciate the thought of expanding the scope of the Municipal Airport Advisory Commission in the sense that if we have more than one municipal airport, then it makes sense to have more representation and people out there who are more a part of it. And so there's a lot of interesting and intriguing opportunities that expand from this conversation, and I look forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, well said. Thank you very much, Chris. All right, so next on the agenda, if there's no questions before I turn, there are none. It's going to be a presentation by Jacobs, David Ames, and it's the Master Service Agreement, which is, as I'm sure he will describe to us, the overarching contract for driving forward the Port of Alaska modernization. So, Mr. Ames, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I, Desiree, I think you have a presentation uh, from me. If if you can present it, um, that'd be great. If not, I can present it from my computer. Um, if you could present it, that would be very helpful. Okay, just and one I just second. Status, so you should be able to share. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So. Okay, can everyone see the presentation? Yes. Okay, so uh, this is a, a change order for the program management services, the master service agreement for Jacobs and HDR for the Port of Alaska modernization program. Um, the status of the program at the moment is that phase one, which is a, a total of about $225 million, uh, and, and and focus primarily on developing the petroleum and cement terminal is nearing completion. Um, should be in operation by the summer, if not earlier. Um, phase two, which is the uh, uh, replacement of the cargo docks and the uh, first phase of the north end stabilization, um, which is uh, a, a, the uh, most critical activity in the establishment of food security for um, for Alaska. Uh, has commenced. Uh, permitting has started. Um, the uh, draft application uh, for permits have, has been submitted to the Corps of Engineers. The preliminary design and the evaluation of alternatives, structural alternatives to make the dock more uh, permittable and speed construction is underway. And the solicitation of bids for the administ new administration building at the port um, for the design build contract is out to bids right now. Bids are due back to purchasing on the 15th of, uh, of February. Um, program management services, Jacob's offices, are funded only through the 1st of March 2022. Um, 
and uh, multi-year phase two tasks are underway. And as I mentioned, those phase two tasks are critical to establishing food security for uh, for the state. Um, visually, the components of this program uh, and phase two of the program, uh, the PCT here on the um, uh, here on the right, as I say, is nearing completion. Phase two will consist of replacements of uh, both container terminals, the Matson and the tote berths, terminal one and terminal two. Um, uh, uh, and that, as I say, that especially terminal one is critical to establishing uh, food security. And then uh, the first phase of stabilization of the uh, north extension, which will be critical to establishing nav navigational safety for the new terminals. Okay, the phase two schedule uh, running through 2025. Um, uh, Obviously, the program, the uh, this change order would include funding of the uh, program management office through each of those years. Um, the cargo docks would be um, uh, the key focus of the program during those years. Preliminary engineering are already underway and funding. Uh, I should mention uh, items shown in red here uh, have not yet been funded. Items shown in yellow have been funded and are ongoing. Uh, as a, a preliminary engineering and permitting of the cargo docks are underway. The environmental impact study um, and our and our contribution to it um, has not yet been funded and will be part of the permitting process, as will design management for the uh, both the detailed design management for both terminal one and terminal two. Um, regarding the administration building, uh, this change order would include design management and construction management for the administration building. It would it would include design management permitting and construction management for the north end stabilization, the first phase of it. Um, an optimization study and preliminary engineering for the petroleum terminal, which are um, a, a, a part of a, a later phase, but they're these this portion of the work needs to be completed during phase two could to comply with schedule requirements and then additional activities the ongoing construction management of the petroleum and cement terminal and the relocation of the south floating dock are already funded uh, and are underway and will be completed under this program and then uh, we have uh, there is a strategic communication and public outreach budget um, and a uh, funding management uh, uh, budget to help uh, uh, manage and assist um, uh, the mayor's office and the municipality in securing funding for the work. Um, as I as I indicated at the end of uh, uh, February this year, um, uh, the funding for the current uh, program management office uh, runs out. Um, the contract is in place until the end of February of 2023. Um, what the what the change order proposes is an extension of the contract uh, two and a half years to the uh, third end of the third quarter uh, 2025 um, and an extension of funding for the for not just next year but those two and a half years the reason for the timing of the change order is that um, that would take us to the we have multi-year phases um, or sorry, be multi-year uh, tasks that are underway and I know there has been um, a question of whether the uh, the pro project management um, contract should be recompeted or if uh, there should be a change in the program management office. Um, that is certainly a, a, an option and if, if that's uh, what the municipality uh, wishes to do, uh, we can do that, but that would require a significant um, transition and a transition plan and the potential disruption of ongoing activities um, during that phase period or during that time period. At the end of the third quarter of 2025, that would be when the uh, phase um, two would be moving into the construction phase and would be a more natural time to recompete the work if uh, a recompete was desired. We can certainly recompete at any stage, but it but if that's the option, um, we would have to develop a transition plan to transition um, uh, uh, if in the event that uh, another program manager were brought in. Assuming uh, Jacobs were successful in the recompete, um, there would be a reduced disruption, but still a, a slight disruption while that effort was going on. 
The change order proposal um, is the extension of the program management MSA term from uh, to March 2023 to 1 September 2025, 2.5 years, and the approval of uh, a $34 million budget allocation for the MSA from 2 March to 1 uh, September 2025, which is three and a half years. Just as a means of com a comparison metric here, uh, phase two program management costs were 6.8 million per year, managing the two point or the, the 20, 225 million dollar in program activities during that time period. This phase two would begin at 9.7 million dollars per year, managing a 1.2 billion dollar program uh, uh, in moving forward. Um, uh, so this was intended as an inf an information session for the change order that that uh, will likely going be going uh, before the assembly um at this time i'm happy to answer any questions thank you uh for the record at 11 31 miss kennedy arrived to the meeting um are there any members with questions So I'm not seeing anyone, but I have a number of questions. So um, okay. anyone who is a member who has a question, feel free to interrupt and we'll get you on the queue. Um, my first question is, um, there have been a lot of conversations about the North End stabilization, but I haven't seen a plan come forward for what the actual plan is. And it looks like it's moving forward pretty rapidly according to this plan that we're well into it. So uh, can we, be briefed on the North End Stabilization Project sometime in the near future? Uh, we can, and uh, the I, I can say that the first phase of North End Stabilization would be the finalization of the preliminary design. Um, we do have a preliminary design for it, uh, and uh, but this would be bid as a, the idea is to bid it as a design build contract, so detailed design would be performed by the construction contractor doing the work. Um, but I'd be, I'm sorry. So it would be just an opportunity for you to brief us on the flow of that project. That'll be great because that's sure. a pretty substantial project and that relates to Merit, and that relates yep. to a number of essentials that have to be lined up before progress can move forward. So then, yeah, happy to do that. what change order number is this? Do you know? Uh, I can dig up the document. Um, just one second. Uh, I'll have to. Uh, Two questions there on that account is what change order number and what number of change orders are allowed under the contract as originally drafted? Oh, uh, you mean what number uh, what number of change order is is it in the sequence? OK, I was looking for the actual code number. Um, uh, I believe it would be change order number 10. And my understanding from uh, uh, from from the state is that this this uh, it, assuming the assembly approves it, this would be an acceptable uh, additional change order. Uh, I you I think you would have to consult the, the municipality attorneys to confirm that, but that is my understanding of it. So great. Next question I have is um, where are you strictly working on design? and construction or are you also tasked with working on the plan of finance we are uh aiding in providing information on the plan of finance um we have not been tasked with obtaining finance but we we have been uh, tasked with uh, uh providing information for the development of a plan of finance yeah for sure i'm not asking about obtaining funding i think that's really going to be the duty of the administration and the assembly to figure out but really it's the plan that's that moving topic and we have that third party that was apparently hired to do a review of the plan as drafted uh, are you see so what i heard you say i think uh, make sure i captured this right is you're working with that group to work on the plan of finance uh, yes, as far as our uh, specific role, this PAMP funding management uh, component of the of the uh, contract includes the advisory and consulting services for that. But uh, we have not been tasked yet with actually developing that plan. Right. OK, and then. Um, so this moves me to both a question for Steve and uh, the eighth floor. And the question really is around the competition um, issue. And Steve, first question for you, and it's the same question for the administration. I'd like to hear both perspectives. Is uh, is it your intent that we proceed with the current contractor or 
would you prefer that we move towards a competitive process and why? Give me some rationale. Yeah, to, uh, to the chair uh, for the for the committee, uh, Steve Rebuffo, I'm the port director. Uh, I, I, ha I have to say that I, I am very comfortable uh, if it's uh, if it's the assembly's uh, decision to to stay with Jacobs, I am very comfortable moving forward with, with them. They they've been a tremendous asset to this program. We've successfully delivered uh, the petroleum and cement terminal in uh, in two years and and under what it was initially forecast to be done at. And uh, I uh, I think this might be the wrong time to shift gears. These guys climbed quite a learning curve with us with respect to uh, the area that we're trying to do this construction in, uh, the means and methods uh, of, of construction of the petroleum cement terminal and what we've learned from that. That's a lot of corporate knowledge that I think is going to serve us well as we move forward. I have no objection to uh, having them stay around. Thank you. And then to the administration, I'm not sure who would be the best person to answer, but uh, the procurement department has been leaning in on the question of sole source and non-competitive and kind of extensions a bit with us. So I want to understand what the position is of the administration on the question of moving forward with a continued contractor or with a competition. Through the chair, this is Colby Hickel, deputy municipal manager, and it is the position of the administration to continue with Jacobs Engineering. They've done an excellent job of the PCT terminal and continuing on with the next phases. And we also believe that changing out Jacobs at this time would hinder the project and delay it further. And we just need to continue with Jacobs Engineering. Thank you, Colby. At least there's uni unification there, which is good. Question for you on the plan of finance conversation. Can you brief us? It doesn't have to be today, but get kind of ready for us to have a framework around when we can expect information and how we participate in the ongoing development of the plan of finance, because I think that's probably the linchpin to success. To the chair, absolutely. Uh, we'd be happy to sit down when we have a uh, more finalized plan of finance. It would be, we can set that up. Um, I will get with the uh, CFO office and we will put together something for you. Thank you very much. Any other members have questions on related as related to the port? I don't see any. I have one last question, Steve. Uh, I don't know what the ritual is, but when do we get to come down and smash a bottle of champagne into the steel that is the new petroleum and cement terminal? <laughs> yeah, uh, I you know, David. David had mentioned that we're uh, we're going to target uh, sometime uh, in the uh, early spring. Uh, we've got a little bit of dredging to redo. Uh, as a consequence of not only the winter, but uh, not being able to get in there as often as we would have liked to during the construction season because the construction barges were were in place and focused on doing that construction. Uh, we will probably hit a beneficial occupancy though when we can uh, when we can get a barge in there. Uh, yeah. What we will do is sit down. And we you know during one of our weekly meetings with Jacobs, who is planning that uh, the when of it right now. And uh, and and see whether uh, you know whether we can uh, we should do it when we know we can bring tankers in or when we know we can bring something in, and uh, and and safely get it offloaded. You know, there's still a little bit of uh, testing that has to be done with the petroleum lines to make sure there's no leaks and uh, and all of the electronics work uh, that we haven't done yet because there are still some pieces parts. As uh, as David mentioned, that we're waiting for delivery before we can finalize that portion of it. But uh, yeah, it's going to be sooner rather than later that we'll be able to do a little something. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're all excited about that. All right. Well, I'm certain that most of us would like to attend such a momentous occasion, and probably folks from the past as well, because this is a moment that's been thought about and dreamed about and fought over and cried over and uh, continued on over for decades and uh, here we are at the verge of something really great so thank you everybody for your work um, if there are no further questions we'll turn to the last parts of the agenda oh wait first there was a question for mr gates thank you for your presentation mr ames and steve uh, uh, thank you for your time yeah yep. thank you and uh dean you had an issue on the port airports or a question or a comment mr gates oh sorry um thank you mr mr chair uh I was just getting briefly stated. Um, maybe it's a little stale now, but uh, about the Birchwood Airport and the uh, 
a report that we had from Mr. LaRue and Mr. Starr. Um, I just noticed in our municipal code, from a municipal code reader's perspective, our municipal code in Title 11 has the municipal airports chapter, and it's worded a little generic, and the definition of an airport is any municipal airport, and it just strikes me that, and this is from the 1980s and prior, it hasn't been amended since, but it just strikes me that, uh, that the, uh, our local government has had the idea that our, we'll have a whole bunch of, maybe not a whole bunch, but we'll have more than just one municipal airport here. And the wording throughout that chapter is that way. And Merrifield is only actually named once. Uh, so I uh, just think that that's in line. And then I guess that's our you know, municipalities glittered with uh, some airstrips here and there, a number of them. So I think that there was some foreseeable idea that we would have um, at least a few. So I just uh, wanted to mention that from our public. Yeah, you know, Dean, this, this actually fits into a conversation that we had uh, with the previous appointment for the Municipal Airport Advisory Commission, which is a seat that is in the code currently drafted for members of the Alaska Airmen's Association, but just doesn't really fit because the Airmen's Association had some concerns about how the appointments are made, if their name's on it. And so to me, it raises the question of how we might consider reorganizing that commission, but we should put it in the context of the efforts that are ongoing out at Birchwood and with Mr. Starr and that process, because it could be a nice opportunity for realignment in a way that meets the future goals. So, um, Next on the agenda, we have section A, 4A, which is a stormwater utility update, which we will belay at this time, maybe come back to you at some time. Um, we're going to leave it on there because it's it's a utility created by the uh, municipality already under the code, hasn't been removed, will likely be removed. Next, legislative priorities. Number, any members of the committee uh, have any additions to conversation about legislative priorities because tomorrow we have a work session on the legislative package. All right, I'm not hearing anything there except my dog. And uh, again, I'm sorry about that. Then the last item on the agenda is budget items for 2023. Any members of the committee wish to add to that? And uh, hearing and seeing none, if there are members of the public who uh, wish to be heard, we'll be moving into that separate section of the agenda right now. But I also wanna speak to those of you who I know are listening, who have had a long stake in the conversation about the port and the various other interests that are on the table, that we are always welcoming emails and communications from you either individually or as a group, as a committee, um, to understand what your concerns are about issues as they continue to develop in an ongoing manner related to these projects. Next, uh, this is the opportunity for members of the public to be heard, audience participation. Any members of the public wish to be heard for this meeting? If you are on the phone, I believe you hit star six. Okay, I'm not hearing or seeing anything with that. We managed to get through a tight agenda with plenty of time left over. Members of the committee, any last items you'd like to bring up? Boy, this was a quiet one. Uh, thank you everybody for your time and effort in briefing the assembly on the matters of the enterprises and utilities. And with that, I would adjourn this meeting. Thank you everybody.